Welcome to Cape Breton Movers and Shakers, where we have conversations with people who are making things happen here in Cape Breton. I'm Richard Lorway, president of GoCapeBreton.com, and today I'm talking with Erica Shea, president of New Dawn Enterprises. Welcome, Erica. Hi, thank you. So starting at, you know, the beginning, um, for those who don't know, and I can't imagine anyone in this community doesn't know, but what is New Dawn and, and, and what's its mission? Udon is a not-for-profit community development corporation. And so we are governed by a volunteer board of directors who are uh, drawn from the different sectors in the community that we work in. And we respond to community needs by either founding or expanding uh, financially sustainable solutions to those needs. So for example, um, one of New Dawn's earliest projects was housing in the community. So there was an insufficient supply of good quality rental housing, uh, let alone affordable rental housing. And so uh, New Dawn responded to that need by building a series of apartment buildings and, and housing has been an area of work that, that has stayed really close to our hearts over the last 46 years. Of course, now we do a number of other things as well. Um, oftentimes today we'll describe ourselves as a social enterprise because that is a, a term that people are more and more familiar with. Back in 1976, when the organization started, uh, it could take a long time. It could take the entire interview uh, that we have today to try to explain um, the, the structure of the organization and, and why that structure was suited to its purposes. And New Dawn's mission and vision are helping to create a more self-reliant and vibrant Cape Breton Island. So all of the, the projects that we take on are divisions of work uh, in some respects, they're, they're very different from one another, but they all feed into that mission of a more self-reliant and vibrant community. And so um, by self-reliant, we mean a community where we are making our own decisions and we've got the, the capacity to act on those decisions and to bring about the kind of future that we want here. And we we own uh, and control some of our own assets. Um, we, we, have, we have the mechanisms to create the kind of future um, that we imagine for ourselves and our children and our, our grandchildren. So today, New Dawn works in housing. So we do uh, uh, residential rentals. We have some affordable units, some market units, and we have some um, commercial real estate that we rent out. We have the Center for the Arts, the former Holy Angels Convent, uh, which the organization purchased in 2012. It opened in uh, 2020, six weeks before uh, COVID-19 became a regular part of our day-to-day -day lives. So that was a bit of an unexpected twist, but that's a 36,000 square foot uh, Center for the Arts in the North End. We have an Immigration Settlement Center on Charlotte Street. And so uh, for international students, graduates, refugees, economic immigrants, uh, we help them get settled into the community, whether that's housing or school registrations for children or um, interview skills, volunteer opportunities. We have a home care company. And so most of our staff in the organization work for the home care company. It is a private home care company. Um, and when that began in the early 1980s, there were no uh, private home care companies on the island. And so if you didn't qualify for publicly subsidized home care, you really had few other options. We operate a couple of um, uh, one large facility and then some small options homes for adults with intellectual and physical disabilities. We have a, a robust and growing Meals on Wheels program. Uh, another one of our areas of work that we have been at for decades and in the last five or six years has really 
um, both expanded in terms of the number of people that we're serving, especially through COVID. So we went from serving um, 12,000 meals a year to 20,000 meals a year, but we now also operate the Good Food Bus, uh, the, the Better Bite Cafe, which is located in the convent, and are on this path to becoming a more of kind of a full service community food center that is concerned with um, not just seniors food insecurity, but the other areas in the community where um, food insecurity does manifest and persist. We, uh, for about a decade, uh, administered a CDF program. That was a big part of our yearly rhythms. Um, we were able to raise $13 million from local investors in Cape Breton to invest in Cape Breton businesses. And lastly, I don't think I'm forgetting anyone, uh, we have a community engagement uh, division that both um, creates spaces for conversations about what we would like our future to look like and also um, is able to lend some of our organizational capacity to other organizations in the community and keep us connected to their incredible work. That was way longer than, than you were betting on, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I should mention, like, so New, New Dawn is having an impact that's, you know, broad and deep, you know, clearly in the community. You've been around since 1976, I believe, which... As I'm a, yeah. so I should also mention that I have served on the board for a couple of terms in the past, so I'm not exactly an unbiased observer. I, I know the good work that New Dawn does, and uh, I know that, uh, you know, you just, the capacity just keeps growing over time. And when you started out at the beginning, it was, you know, social housing, yeah. and, uh, and it's, it's just grown from there leaps and bounds. Um, so, so how long have you been with New Dawn? So I've been with New Dawn now since about 2012, 2011, 2012. So just coming up on 10 years, uh, actually. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it has been a wild, uh, incredible, rewarding ride. Um, yeah. <laughs> so how, how, how important is it for you personally to know that you're, I mean, you're not, you know, I'm sure you, there's all kinds of opportunities for someone like yourself. You could be working in all kinds of firms, making a lot of money. But in this case, you know, you're you're making a positive difference in the community. And how 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 important is that for you personally to have that kind of fulfillment in what you do? It's really it's really important. Uh, it's really important. It's it's always uh, a path that I was. I was drawn to, I aspired to work in the, the community not-for-profit sector. I didn't imagine finding an organization as unique as New Dawn in terms of its organizational culture and its values. And so I, I feel incredibly, incredibly lucky uh, to, to, to have a connection to an organization that really is um, about big ideas and conversations and um, leadership and, and, and space for trying new things, even if they're risky, even if they fail. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as, as, uh, and it has happened, and I've been on the board when, you know, we try things, and you're right, I mean, when I, my time on the board, I recall having some of the most interesting and exciting conversations I've, I've ever had, and stimulating. And uh, they didn't always lead to success, but that was fine. Yeah, you know that was that was okay because if you if you're not taking those kinds of risks, then you're you're not really going to have an impact, in my opinion. But yeah, absolutely. And I think I think where we want to be responding to community needs, and those needs are always changing, and they're never exactly what you think they are um, on the surface. It it takes yeah. us. You know, you've got to go in a certain, you've got to go into these areas of work a certain depth or distance um, to understand if there's a role for you, uh, if that fits, if you can make a difference. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Right, right. So let's, let's move on to your latest exciting innovative project, uh, which is the, is the Pine Tree Park Solar Garden. Yep. Can you, can you tell me a bit, how did this come about and... Yeah. Where, where are we now? Yeah. So, uh, so this came about uh, the, 
the new, at the time, she was the you know, fairly new CEO of the Bershon Center, Dr. Beth Mason. Um, one of Beth's commitments in her work at the Bershon Center was to, to connect the Bershon Center's capacity to community organizations and community need. And I think um, the university has, has longed for a way to do that, to be more connected to the community. And I think, I think Beth has found a very uh, practical, um, helpful way to be more present to the community. So Beth had approached us um, with this notion of a community solar garden. So a community solar garden is a large array of solar panels mm -hmm. that multiple homes or organizations can plug into. They, they each um, own a number of the panels, however many panels are required to offset their electricity consumption. So, uh, so they, they call it a garden. Everyone has a couple of rows in the garden. The, the array that we're working on up at Pine Tree Park will provide for all of the electricity consumption for 28 residential units, our own New Dawn guest home, which is that 31 bed uh, residential care facility. We have the Schooner Curling Club up there and Carefield Manor. And so the intent is to create a net zero community at Pine Tree Park, which um, for us is particularly interesting. So that's a community that has a long history. It was a uh, Canadian Forces Base Sydney. Um, that's what it was initially built to be and uh, its purpose. As it was decommissioned and handed over to uh, Cape Breton County, uh, it was sold from the county to New Dawn Enterprises and then discovered shortly after that the property had been um, contaminated by home heating oil that had leached into the soil. And so there was a very, very, very substantial remediation of this property because of the contamination by fossil fuels. So it feels like a wonderful next chapter in the, in the property's story to be moving away from fossil fuels entirely and to be able to declare that there will be no more fossil fuels at Pine Tree Park. Uh, it's been it's been fascinating experience. We've we've participated in uh, energy efficiency retrofit programs through Efficiency Nova Scotia in the past for some of our residential apartments, but this is on a whole other scale in terms of the the technical complexity. Uh, the phases that we're going through to first reduce consumption and then uh, size the array for the newly reduced consumption. Um, yeah, that, okay. um, that, that, that's, that's what we're up to up at Pine Tree Park. Excellent. So, so you, um, you mentioned a community garden and I know there's going to be, you know, different phases. Phase one yep. obviously is getting all the new Dawn buildings and properties up there to carbon neutral. And then, and then working with other local nonprofit organizations, I presume that they'll hopefully at some point be able to buy some arrays and then offset them. So will, will, will private residences in the immediate area, will they at some point have an opportunity to, to do the same? Yeah, it's, it's really, really early days for the new virtual net metering regulations. So it was only about six months ago that it became possible to separate the physical building from the solar panels that were offsetting its electricity use. And so we know right now that conceptually that's very much possible and it's something that we would like to see happen. If Pine Tree Park is the right place for that to happen, both for organizations associated with that particular substation and private homes, we have lots of space up at Pine Tree Park. We also have, um, you know, been um, working with and benefiting from the incredible technical expertise at the Verschern Center. And I know that that is also part of their dream in terms of this transition to renewables, um, that they're gonna be able to facilitate more individual homes and organizations participating affordably 
in some of our renewables. Right. So um, do you have a sense of, you, you refer to the substation, but in terms of the geography, the, the catchment area, if you will, is there a sense of where the, the boundaries are of that? Um, there is. I don't have it. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to ask that question. <laughs> no, so, so, so we've been kind of talking about, you know, this, the Sydney substation, which is sort of the downtown Sydney area, ah. the Whitney Pier substation, which gotcha. is where Pine Tree Park would fall. And then I, I think the next substation is the Lingan Road substation. Right. So we're talking potentially Whitney Pier, though. Is, is... That's right. Yeah, that's right. As the, as the possible catchment area uh, for a much larger community solar garden than the one we're currently piecing together. Right. So, so what is the limitation is basically real estate, like space for panels? That's kind of it? It is. It is. From my understanding, I feel like I'm an engineer in training these days. <laughs> we all agree. Yeah. But, but from my understanding, that is, it's, it's, it's having good real estate that is, um, um, you know, kind of facing in the right direction, um, can be both a secure area, but it's also accessible for uh, maintenance and, and cleaning and things like that. And at Pine Tree Park, um, we, we have a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of advantages and assets, and one of them is 80 acres of land. Right, right. Yeah. So how much maintenance is required for these panels? Is, is it an ongoing thing or quarterly? Or or we're about to find out. Um, <laughs> um, so, so um, certainly um, um, cleaning, snow clearing, right. um, as is required. And so um, we'll get a sense in our first couple of years at what intervals those have to happen. Um, I would anticipate that there is at minimum um, sort of annual um, inspection and maintenance just to make sure that um, the, the panels are in good condition. There's no risks. Um, the, the connections are in um, good conditions and everything's performing as it should perform. Gotcha. Well, I can tell you, since I curl at Schooner, as you know, I can tell you that in the winter, it's quite a windy hilltop. And, Absolutely. And a yep. lot of snow drifts and so on. Yep. So, I mean, I'm just yes. snow fences. I'm just saying could be could be something you should look into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, super. I mean, that this has been really interesting and because I, I was really curious about this project. Uh, one of the reasons being that I do curl a schooner, of course, but uh, anything else you care to add? Yeah, no, you know, um, I think as we look at, I think as we look at, uh, and, and this is certainly um, affordable housing is a really clear priority certainly of the current federal government. I think the, the provincial government is grappling with, with how they um, provide more effective incentives for new affordable housing in the province. And one of the components of that that we have to grapple with is the cost of energy uh, for low income tenants. And so we've got both, both wanting to minimize our greenhouse gas emissions, of course, but uh, when we look at some of the data around energy poverty, it is not surprisingly uh, the highest in Atlantic Canada uh, across the country. And so um, it's really, really exciting to be at a point in time where these technologies are becoming more affordable and the expertise required to design and maintain them is becoming more accessible. And so I think, I think through this project, um, this, this will be a turn in the road for us in terms of how we do housing, uh, how we build housing, um, how we think about our housing models so that we can better stabilize um, and lower those costs of energy for affordable housing tenants. It's really exciting. Yeah, it is an exciting time. I, I'm I'm wondering if at some point we'll have a visit from Elon Musk, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you know he, the battery tech. Apart from all the cars and the rocket ships and all that, his battery technology is astounding, and, and is it? okay, it's yeah. changing things. You know, right? Yep, yeah. absolutely. All right, super. Well, thanks so much, Erica. That was Great. Erica Shea, president of New Dawn Enterprises. We'll see you next time on Cape Breton Movers and Shakers.